Okay, Paul, when we were looking at this earlier, you said there was these volcanoes on Mars. Now, Earth has volcanoes. Maybe Venus has some really small ones. So why, if Mars has volcanoes, why is it so different than the other ones? Yeah, so I mean, Mars, we've got all the high land we talked about, which yep. is just covered in craters. But then we've got this huge bulge here, the fastest bulge, and the whopping great volcanoes, That's including, right. of course, Olympus Mons, Mons, the biggest mountain in the solar system. Um, and this is very different from the Earth. I mean, we couldn't have a volcano as big as Olympus right. Mons because it's too, too much gravity. It's too be squashed by the intense gravity. That's right, as we talked about earlier, because Mars has a third weaker gravity, it could be three times higher. But there's again no sign of plate tectonics. That's right. Well, actually, there's very ambiguous possible magnetic signs that maybe there was a little bit of plate tectonics very early on in the first four, four, four billion years ago, but certainly nothing since then. Uh, the surface hasn't been touched over most of the surface of Mars in this time. There's been erosion by the wind, but it's not been anything like enough to wash away all these craters. But there are these huge volcanoes. Because Olympus Mons isn't the only one. There's a few of these volcanoes. Yes. So um, the main famous ones are the Tarsus Bulge, which is a huge bulge with three big volcanoes on That's it, right. and then Olympus Mons itself. And there are other volcanoes elsewhere. So what's going on here? Our guess is that this could be a volcanic hotspot. OK. So it's a different style of volcano than the ones from kind of the plates Yes, so most of the volcanoes and earthquakes and earth are subduction zones when you get a plate being pushed down and rubbing at the surface of volcanoes, like all the ones in you know, the Andes That's and right. Japan and so on. But there are a few volcanoes on Earth which are nowhere near a plate boundary. That's right. The most famous example are the Hawaiian Islands. Very famous to us for completely other reasons, actually. Yes. And what you can see here is a map of the Pacific Ocean. And you can see this is Hawaii. And you can see a chain of volcanoes, most of which are underwater and submerged. They're called seamounts. Yep extending all the way up and then it turns a corner and goes up here uh, up towards um, Siberia. Yep. So what's going on here? I mean the normal idea is that what we have is a plume of lava mm -hmm. coming up through the Earth's interior just the one place and it's punching a hole at the top where it produces a volcano but then the plate is moving across the top and then you punch another hole and the plate ah, so, moves. So as the plate hole. moves, you get new holes that pop up in the motion or the angle the plate is moving? Yes. So what we're seeing in that line is presumably um, uh, the, 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 presumably the, the, the deep underground thing has been here the whole time, but the plate has moved over it. That's right. Um, and, and so when it has enough energy to pop out, it pops out and then moves and pops out and then moves and pops out and moves. That's right. And we can see uh, at the tip of it, uh, we've got... Um, Big Island of Hawaii, Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea, yep. which are these huge shield volcanoes, which actually look a bit like, I mean, these are, if you measure it from the base to the summit, the biggest mountains on Earth. That's right. Because their base is in the bottom of the ocean, four kilometres below the surface, and the, the top's over four kilometres up. We've all spent lots of time at the top of these places. That's right. I mean, they, they really stand out on the surface of, of Hawaii. It's very different than, as he said, going around to the mountainous regions Mount of Fuji the Mount Fuji or something exactly. like that, yes. So, um, we know these places because, of course, Mauna Loa has lots of telescopes on top, and we've all spent far too much of our lives. That's right. Mauna Kea is uh, one of the best places because it is such a high place that you are, as you see here, you're above the clouds, right? And this is just, as you said, why this thing is so tall. It puts in a scale why we put our telescopes there. So it could well be that on Earth you get these, as well as the general convection that moves the plates around, you have, in addition, plumes that go up presumably punching through the general convection. Ah, okay. I mean, it's not quite a liquid flowing. It's the uh, mantle of the Earth is actually a solid that can flow. So That's it's, right. So it's a rather strange substance. But it looks like you might be able to get a, a channel of lava going through the solid that flows and holds its position even as the plate over the top moves. So is then the potential idea that something like Hawaii, the hot spots, is what causes the volcanoes on Mars? It could be, but on Mars, what probably happened was that, because you didn't have plate tectonics, That's true. The, um, the hot spots just occurred in the same place. They, didn't have to, they, didn't, they weren't moving around. Well, hot spots are never moving around, the crust yeah. was moving around. But maybe because Mars is smaller than the Earth, it solidified faster and the crust just locked and froze. Okay. And so this plume just was able to stay in the same place for a very long time and build these enormous... Okay. volcanoes and also the lava flowing out from these enormous volcanoes filled over the craters and left us in the ah, flat plains. Okay. So 
This seems to be our best guess as to what's going on on Mars. Maybe the crust became solid and you had some sort of hot spot, maybe something in Tarsus, which made these three volcanoes and one for Olympus Mons. And that's our best guess for why you've got the old and the new terrain and the volcanoes on Mars. Okay.